according to Zulu history, in ancient times, their people inhabited northern Africa. When the rain stopped and the region became Sahara, the Zulu migrated south. Some eminent visitors over the years, among them Gustave Flaubert, thought the Sphinx was black African. And it's also a very African looking face. Do they think that, which is obviously it's the continent of Africa. And some said that 19th century travelers, lots of them noted that this was really an African face, but what they meant is that it's a sub-Sahara African yes. face. It's a real African African face. The Nubians mm -hmm. are very black. It's a real African African face. The Nubians mm -hmm. are very black. It's a real African African face but have more or less finer features. 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 It's a real African African face. 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 So basically, I'm every type of African there is. I mean, that looks more like an NBA basketball player. I mean, that looks more like an NBA basketball player <laughs> than, you know, than an Egyptian. <laughs> than, you know, than an Egyptian. Oh, 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 then an Egyptian. Oh, then an Egyptian. Oh, then an Egyptian. I mean, that looks more like an NBA basketball player. Oh, then an Egyptian. Nomos points out in 30 AD also point out the Egyptian priests mocked the Greeks because on many things they have never known the truth. Yet these Greeks are held up by the Eurocentrics as the standard. What seemed to be clear is that the Egyptian priests were regarded by the Greeks as the keepers of great astronomical wisdom and the days of the fourth dynasty the primitive Greeks would have appeared as barbarians and other Europeans as no more than cavemen by the sophisticated and technologically advanced Egyptians who built the pyramid. Specifically the king's chambers, southern shaft, points to Orion's belt. And the queen's chambers, southern shaft, is oriented to the position Sirius was in, in the fourth dynasty. There's also another shaft that hasn't been connected to a star yet, but points directly south. And this runs in a straight line that doesn't deviate from more than a centimeter. So here we have the royal chambers, pointed at Sirius and Orion in a meticulously laid out shaft pointed celestial south. At Nathaplea, the alignments are pointed at these same stars and the cattle burials are pointed towards the south. Let's also remember that cattle burials were also found inside some of these pyramids in the absence of actual human remains, just like at this ceremonial center in Lower Nubia 8,000 years ago. when the sky is still dark, you're standing here looking south on the meridian sightline window, you would have seen in the sky the three stars of Orion's belt in the location with the configuration and the angle designated by the star viewing diagram, by those three stones right there. And they match very well. They're at the right angle, they're at the right azimuth in the sky, and it's at the right time, just before summer solstice sunrise.
There is even evidence that the people of Naphtha Playa had a subtle and elegant concept of processional motion, something academics have previously insisted was only discovered by the group. By placing two or more markers in a straight line aimed at the rising place of a star, such as the upright stones over at Naphtha Playa, an observer can witness that same star rising in that same spot each day. Every 72 years, that position will move by one degree. Multiply this by thousands of years, and we can now see how the Egyptians were in possession of thousands of years of astronomical knowledge. What seems to be clear is that the Egyptian priests were regarded by the Greeks as the keepers of great astronomical wisdom. According to the findings of Windorf and Schild, Naphtha Playa began functioning as a ceremonial center during the Middle Neolithic around 6100 to 5500 BC. In the days of the fourth dynasty, the primitive Greeks would have appeared as barbarians and other Europeans as no more than cavemen by the sophisticated and technologically advanced Egypt. Which takes us right to the birth of Egypt's pharaonic Nagata culture. When the desert became super dry and their animals died, the Naphtha people migrated. To the There's Naphtha. also evidence that this site at Naphtha Playa was visited as far back as 9,000 to 6,000 BC, which gives it an even longer astronomical observation period. The Orion's belt stars match the viewing diagram very perfectly uh, in the window 6400 to 4900 BC when they're at their minimum tilt. So if we look at the in the sky, as you would have seen, the, the shoulder stars of Orion, when the constellation was at its maximum tilt the other way, they would have matched this configuration in the star viewing diagram. Sirius was important to dynastic Egypt because it signaled the start of the Nile flood and was associated with Sothis, who was depicted as a cow with a young plant between her horns. Later, she would become known as Hathor, the mother of the pharaohs. We also see this in Egypt where the Apis bull was ceremonially buried. The ancient Egyptians would target these celestial bodies and give them intense cow and bull symbolism. Let's not forget that Egypt was indeed an intensely stellar society when it came to its myths. Out of all the stars in the sky, it is only these three stellar asterisms, Orion, the Big Dipper, and Sirius, that can be identified from ancient Egyptian texts and drawings. Orion, was known as Sa to the Egyptians. It was associated with Osiris and the king himself, who was the celestial and celebrated Apis bull of Memphis. Pyramid, built by the great African architect M. Hotel, was also associated with the royal star treatment. They know for certain that the people of Naphtha Playa measured the alignment Sirius and the bull's thigh at 6100 BC, as measured multiple times by astronomy software and human calculation. The software also included special software written by Dr. Brophy and Mr. Duval to better these calculations. And these calculations tell us that Sirius, the bull's thigh, and the rising of Vega all were within a few hundred years of each other and all are recorded at Naphtha Playa.
That looks more like an NBA basketball player.